Bravo. Okay, yeah. now welcome back to Soccer oh Mastery gosh, yes. Podcast. We, we we tried to start that one like a few times. Yeah, we've we got a new more. set. It looks different now. Yeah, and we're in the middle. Okay, and technically only one camera. Just see how it goes. So we'll you can test just, it out. Yeah, you can just comment below if if, if you it, think that's all right, or if it if sucks. You want, like some different cuts, or yeah, up to you. Because now there's going to be no zoom ups. You know, you can't see yeah. my can't see my beard, which is probably good because. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I, I shaved today oh. in the morning. I didn't know. Otherwise, it was... Pfft, yeah. Yeah. I'm growing it out. Anyways, we're going to be talking about, as always, at the end, the Premier Academy League. Yeah. But we're going to start off with the topic of today, which is... You don't even know. We're yes. going to be talking it's about the position of defensive midfielder. Oh, my gosh. The defensive number six. All right, defensive Ooh. midfielder. Like we always done in the last one, talk about the physical attributes, maybe some tactical tips, what should they, they should focus on in terms of their yeah. technical ability... Everything like that. So, cool. as we always start with physical attributes, okay? <laughs> what do they need to be? Tall, fast, Superman. Superman, no. I don't know. That, that's quite different, right? Because mm. at least in Brazil, like, they're quite short. Quite yeah. Small. yeah. It's just like, literally, you don't need to be tall. You don't need... Yeah. We need to be fast. Yeah, <laughs> oh, super fast. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, do you need, you know, 100 meter straight line sprinting? Or is it more quick little acceleration of quick yeah, change definitely. left to right? Yeah. Quickly, quick change all the time. That's yep. going to happen with you more yep. often than pretty much like anyone else. So in terms of speed, unlike a winger and a fullback where you got to sprint kind of a fair distance in a straight line, this is more lots of changes of direction. So that quick acceleration of from zero to you know ten, so to speak. How can yeah. you, how quickly yeah. can you get in a couple of meters? Um, so that's more physical. And then height. I played defensive midfield a lot of my time. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so height isn't a major deal in that in that position. It's not a make or break. Obviously, if you're tall, it's gonna help, just because yeah, yeah. height is overpowered. <laughs> Speed and height is overpowered. Um, but it's not but technically that position. You are kind of like a thief, right? Yes. You, in what way? Yes. Yeah. No. Of course. Yeah. In, in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> no, because like technically, you you. Probably would be like one of the first combat when you go like in a counter attack or yes. something like that because you'd be the first one to be there before just reach like the main defenders. Yes, yes, yes. Who protect you're, Justin you're Bieber. The Justin Bieber, the <laughs> the uh, the first line of defense. Oh my gosh! If you haven't seen that works. episode, just go there to check it out. Who is the Justin Bieber on that story? Yeah, I think that was last episode, right? Yeah, oh, that was hilarious. the last episode. Fullback. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, about fullback. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, so defensive midfielder. Um, cool. The it's not so much about 100 meter sprint, but cool quick changes of direction and speed, height, not a make or break. So if you're if you're a shorty like us, cool. Defensive midfield is actually totally yeah. fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so what does a defensive midfielder do? Do you have any uh, input on this? <laughs> yeah, that, Put you on that's the spot? pretty much like what I was trying to say. Yeah. Like technically, when, when you talk to your kid or like mm. when with the athlete, you need to make sure that they're not going to reach the defend the yes. different system. So he would technically would be one of the first combat. Of course, we normally say to the strikers, hey, just keep the pressure, blah, blah, blah. But like, he would be the one who kind of like really know how to play defense. Yes. And has to have like the very first pass, like pretty much like really good because he's going to pass the ball to like the, the, to the midfielders or yes. even to the strikers sometimes. Yes. yes. To the wings. So he kind of have to distribute Distribute? Oh yeah, distribute, yes. Yeah, the ball like quite easily. So if you don't have like a good pass, maybe you might gonna and, be in trouble. And what too. I was saying in terms of defending side, the center backs really depend on you. And if you ever yeah. hear center backs going, Where's my midfield? It generally means the defensive midfield is yeah, out of position. Yeah, yeah. Center backs are like, We need the midfield support, blah blah blah. So yeah. that's whenever center backs are screaming, you should probably look for where the defensive midfielder yeah. is. And that's a, a key point of going, okay. Defensive midfielder, you got to be somewhat defensive minded. You can't be that defensive midfielder who ends up being the, the attacking midfielder or the striker. Otherwise, you're not defense at all. <laughs> no, and then there's a massive hole. Yeah. Um. So as a de- as a defensive midfielder, your first thought is cool. Can I can I provide cover for the the centre backs? Meaning, cool. What I like to say is the defensive midfielder. Can you make sure you're blocking the passing lane to the striker, but also in a position where if they pass to the number ten, meaning the opposition passes to their attacking midfielder, he's your man. You're the defensive midfielder. You've got to be kind of marking and pressing the attacking midfielder. But at the same time, you've got to check your shoulders and say, cool, can they easily pass to the striker? If so, that's bad. 
So defenses, midfielders. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, check your shoulders. Can you be in a position where you're blocking passes to the striker, but also close enough to if the attacking midfielder got it, you could press and win the ball straight away. So that's, sure. a, that's a hot tip for... And kind of like the center back is just like covering you all the time. So <laughs> as soon as they kind of pass to you, the center back will be there ready to take that ball to, yes. take, to give a tackle or something. Yes. So yeah, that's the reason like they normally keep really mad with this. Yes. <laughs> and and, and, and also, also as center backs, we should have said in the last center back, the center back should be talking to you. So defensive midfield and center backs need a good relationship where if there's a striker wandering behind you, they should be saying, hey, move left shoulder or right shoulder letting you know which side the the striker is so you can move and block that passing lane because if they def- if they can just pass straight to the striker that's a massive threat so defensive midfielder you got to block that pass uh, and make sure that doesn't happen so listen to your center backs have your eyes uh, eyes open or ears <laughs> your eyes, eyes, hello, eyes. <laughs> the ears and eyes yeah keep your ears open <laughs> thank god there's not a zoom up camera right now oh yeah definitely keep, keep your ears open <laughs> And listen to your centre back. Okay, yes. he will give you a lot of advice because he can tell you, and he see, he can see the striker where you can't. Yeah, and technically, like they are like kind of like a connection between like defenders and mid and striker and wings and everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I see that position with one of the ones who just kind of like touch the ball the most. Yes, because you're all the time there. Yes, for the defenders, for the, like how can I say attacking midfield? Attacking midfield, yeah. And then for the wings, mm-hmm. so technically you're there for everyone. Yes. So you're like... 100%. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's kind of a defensive mindset. And then so with the attacking side, you're going to be involved with playing out from the back. So the center backs want to pass to you. The full backs want to pass to you. Defensive midfielder, you've got to be providing a passing option for all these players because they depend on you to pass to you. So you should be getting lots of touches on the ball, um, especially when you have possession of it. Um, so when you do have the ball, defensive midfield is cool. If the fullback's got the ball, how can you provide a midfield passing option? If the centre back's got the ball, okay, how can you move and support to make a passing option? And even if those attacking midfielders got the ball, who the people in front of you, can you support from behind? How could you be a passing option in case they need to, you know, keep the ball and, and switch out to a, a different option? So your job is to always be supporting defensively, but also attacking when we have the ball. So make sure you're not ball watching, not just watching people play actually be involved in the game and support everybody that's as a midfielder that's a lot of your job um so that's some tactical tips in terms of technical okay what do they need to have in terms of their technical ability any any, any well any? as i mentioned before i think passing skills yes. has to be really good if you can't pass come on like yeah we're not telling to you to be like literally like to give like assist to the striker all the mm-hmm. time no we're no. not saying that we are talking about even like sometimes like a short pass. Yes. Which is the most important. You cannot have any mistakes in short pass because that's one of the kind of like obligations for everyone, but like for you. Yes. Come on. Like you need yeah. to have like a really nice passing skill. Yes. And you, I, I think that's for the defense, like for even like the attacking one, one of the best. Because as I mentioned, you're going to tell, you're going to keep having that ball with you like all the time. I think you'd be holding that ball for. Are way much longer than the other ones. So you need to, when you pass the ball, it has to be accurate. I think definitely um, 100% passing and the passing and moving because, and, and trying to create those angles of seeing, okay, how can I pass my midfielder when it's a 3v3, there's midfielders everywhere, opposition and ours. How can we get those passes direct to feet on point? And even maybe some long passes when you've got time yeah. where the, the defensive midfielder gets the ball, faces forward, and pings it over either over the top to yep. the wingers or straight to the feet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a crucial aspect is your first touch. Like, okay, as a centre back, you may have a bad first touch and you've got so much time and space that you get away with it. Um, but defensive midfield, especially when you're getting playing out from the back, if you take a bad touch, your centre back <laughs> passes you the ball, you take a bad touch, the attacking midfielder goes, thank you so much, yeah. and bang, they're straight on True. goal. Um, and... Know that you're going to always have pressure on you. There's always going to be midfielders and, and strikers nearby you. So being able to position yourself in a way, okay, can I position myself so I can take my first touch in a way I can face forward and play forward? You don't always want to receive facing back and then think, okay, my centre back just passed to me. Now I can only play back to the centre back. Yeah, um, that's true. Your job is to really be the key of, okay, how can we get from the defenders, get the ball to you into the you know, the attacking phase. Um, because technically during the whole game, the whole traffic 
is mm-hmm. there in the middle. Yes, lots. So that's the reason we keep saying the first touch has to be good because sometimes you're going to receive the ball, has to pass like quickly. And yes. you have to have like a really nice passing skills because, yeah, that's what you're going to do all the time. And that kind of drill that we normally do like in pretty much like every single training session about passing, it's technical. It's not about you, but like mainly specific, we keep thinking about, okay, you pass, as soon as you pass, what is the first thing you, you need to be for that person you pass? An option. Yes. So like it's, it's different, for example, like if a strikers receive the ball in the middle, they're going to pass to you, they're going to run, waiting for the ball maybe or to to find a way to, for that ball coming to you. Mm-hmm. However, on that position, you normally pass, and as soon as you pass, you need to be an option for the, the same person you already passed. Yes. To be like, hey, I'm here for you. <laughs> I'm here yes. to support you. So here's the ball. You do what you have to do, but if you want, I'm here. So you open up. You keep like changing Constantly, all the time. Yeah. So you, you have to be an option. So every time you receive the ball from them, know that you look back to them, they're going to be an option for you. Never pass the ball and think, Good pass, Kyle. I'm really yeah. good at passing. You got to pass them and go, cool, yeah. now can you give it back to me? Another point in terms of passing, you really got to make sure your first time pass is a good option, is, a, yeah. is, is on point. Where in terms of, let's say, say someone passes to you, instead of controlling it, can you find a pass straight away with your, with your first touch? Sometimes yeah. even before you receive the ball, you already know like what you're going to do. Yes. Okay, so the defender has the ball. Like my, my full back or like my center back yeah. has the ball. Okay, I can see like... The attacking midfielder there. As soon as I receive the ball, I'm going to pass Bang. to him. So you open up. Once you receive that ball, the ball is already there because you already passed it. Yes. So you, you need to like think before you do and it. And so that's a, that's a tactical thing of, okay, understanding that's what you have to do, but then you technically have to have the ability to make a first-time pass. <laughs> um, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing Which, at? Because it's true. Like, can you yeah. imagine? Oh, I know what to I, do. I miss it. Because I was thinking to do that. Yeah, but the ball just came up. Yeah, no, no. I'm, yeah. I'm not good. But here, oh my gosh, I'm like a ninja. No, yeah. Uh, serious, <laughs> seriously. It's, it's a game. It's like, cool. You must know what to do. Well, some people can do things, yeah. but they've got no idea what to do. Then we put a lot of emphasis, emphasis on teaching you what to do. But then if they can't do it technically, then that's an issue. Um, and what we say is get in front of a wall and pass against it thousands of times. Um, if you keep missing the pass against the wall, that's, change the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an issue. Like, seriously, fix your touch and you're, yeah. you're passing. Um, as a defensive midfielder, there's going to be so many times where your fullback plays to you. You're going to have a guy right behind you. You're not going to be able to control and, and play with it. You're going to have to pass straight away, bounce to your wing or bounce to your centre back or even bounce back to your fullback. You've got to have the ability to have a first time pass. Um, in the midfield, it's crucial. Defensive midfielder, even even more crucial because if you lose it, pff, we're in strife. Yeah. Um, so yes, if you can't pass the ball first time, get in front of a wall, practice it. Get a teammate, partner, practice your first time bounce or your pass. Keep um, looking to our tips and tricks. You're going to find like a few things yes, for it's you coming. to learn and improve. Yes, yeah. Tuesday tips and tricks. Um, so yes, another massive important point. I'm glad that we, uh, we emphasize that. That's hilarious. Our under-14s, um, Premier League, we're going to get to that. They need to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to give to them like the whole, yeah, this whole episode. Like this whole episode at least. <laughs> hey, keep looking. This, this whole podcast will be dedicated to the under-14s. Oh, jeez. Um, no. Um, but yes... So cool, technical, tactical. That's some that's some things that defensive midfielders need to keep in mind. Um, also, another thing is, okay, you are a defensive midfielder, but if you're just standing in one position, you're always going to be marked. So there's something called midfield rotation. So if somebody's marking you, maybe you could swap position with another midfielder. Could you move up to attacking midfield? Because you might, when you move, you might drag a defender out the way, and that might give you a chance of another midfielder fill your space. So a rotation between the midfielders is really good to try to get away from defenders and create confusion so you can receive the ball with more space. Um, but that's something, you know, you really have to come to academy trainings or club trainings to really understand fully. Verbally, you're not going to understand it. But it's another thing to keep in mind. You can research a bit about midfield, midfield rotation. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's most of our defensive midfield. If yeah. you're good enough to have a long-range shot on you, that's probably pretty decent too. Um, especially with corners and stuff, a lot of times you might be the person sitting out on the D. If the ball bounces out, can you half volley or take a touch and smash in? So long range cool. shots is probably uh, something that you will have a lot of. You're probably not going to be passing into the back of the net very often. You're not going to be that close to the goal. So practice your long range shots rather than you know 
placing into the back of the net as a striker would. Um, but yeah, that's a quick little yeah. wrap up of the defensive midfield. I think that kind of wraps it up. Is there anything? If else? you do have more questions, maybe just leave it in the comments as well, because then we might gonna answer to you in a short video, like maybe. Even there in the pro- yeah, like for sure. YouTube. We might yeah. bring up next uh, if you write down in the comments of the YouTube, we'll answer your question either in the next podcast or even we'll make like a Tuesday tips and tricks or yeah. whatever sort of mini clip for you on Sunday, random video Sunday. Cool. Um, that could be one fan question Sunday or something. Something. Oh cool. yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. But yes, let's move on to the Premier Academy League. We've had success with the under tens finally. Yay. Yay! They won the first game. Finally, hey man, we've improved so much. You weren't there, so Nasio wasn't yes, there. Yes, I wasn't Happy there. Happy birthday, sorry. Gabriel! Happy yeah, it was birthday. my son's birthday. Yay! Yay! It's Friday. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we finally had some success. It's been coming for a long time. We've just been so unlucky. The results just uh, recently just doesn't represent the players um, and our coach and the coaching system and staff that we have. We just uh, we haven't been getting the results, but I think. From now on, things are going to change. We got, um, for example, we versed Adelaide Elite first game. Um, I think they beat us a couple weeks ago, like 3-1, but really it should have been like 6-1. They were just eating us up. This time, we were winning, man. We were, on, we were all, within the first couple minutes, it was 1-0. And, and uh, then we even got a penalty and we missed it. Oh, no. Jaden. <laughs> we can't score penalties Roman missed one Jaden missed one we can't score them um, and then yeah half time we're winning and then somehow it ended up being 2-3 their way but no, massive no, really. like we were in it like yeah, yeah. we were winning we just got unlucky a couple goals went by we didn't hit we didn't score a penalty we were so unlucky to not get points out of that even if it was one or should have been three um, but even from a 2-3 Whereas rather than the first week, it was, you know, they smashed us. Um, we didn't stand a chance. But then it was like, wow, we should have won. And then under 10's Rept Academy. Um, oh, another good point in the video you'll see this Saturday. Um, no. Yeah, maybe this Saturday. I wasn't there. He wasn't there. But the camera so, was there. There was a camera. My mom did it. But um, the whole theme, okay, we lost. The whole day was with Untense. Positivity, positivity, positivity. Um, mm. And that's actually this academy's mentality this week's. Um, with our academy sessions now, we're, we're doing like a, each week there's a different mentality topic. And, and this week is positivity for that reason. Where the kids always get negative. Um, and then when we get negative... We lose a bunch of goals. They start crying and it just gets worse and worse. But we stayed positive um, and we got the result. Finally got three points in a game mm. against Rept Academy, zero, uh, one zero our way. Um, and it was, it's just such a morale boost for the boys um, where they deserve a win. They should they definitely, deserve much definitely. more wins. But also, anyone could watch us and say, damn, we're actually playing really nice football now. We're starting to understand that we've made... Mm. Um, little changes to the um, tactics and, and teaching the kids and them understanding it. Um, and it's all coming together. And the results speak for itself. We played so much better this week. Cool. So super, super exciting. And let's check the leaderboard, even though I don't want to, because I know we're, I'm pretty sure we're last, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, Cassio Red and Karuska, both on 16 points. Adelaide Elite are on 10. Ellie are on 7. Rept Academy is on 6. JA7, because they beat us, they're on 3. We're on three as well. Um, so we are drawing at the bottom. Under 12s though. Alrighty, we versed. Who did we verse first up? Karuska Yellow, another result. Okay, so first game. What a tough game. Yes, they are, let's check where they are on the leaderboard first. They, um, they're on, yeah, they were drawing, but Cassio Red beat them. So Cassio on 18, Karuska's on 15. So they... The first time we versed them, we had no chance. They, yeah. they, it was only 3-0, but it was a 3-0. We didn't have a chance of scoring. This time... 3-0, like, when they could score way yeah, more, yeah. Yeah. But this time, same with the under-10s. The under-12s are starting to understand. They're starting to gel and play football better. Yeah. Of course, as coaching staff, I reevaluated the way we played and made adjustments for the last two weeks. Um, it was 2-1. Cool. And it was so close... Their goal was an own, like, we had an own goal. Oh, no. Like, and it was going straight to our keeper's hand, and then our fullback tries to stick a foot up, dinks it over our own keeper. So, really, if it wasn't for that, it would have been one all. 
And we really should have got points out of that. And that's so upsetting. Cool, so we played good. We played so good, though. And everybody's seen the way we're starting to play football. And it's really uh, coming together. Um, so disappointing result. But it is what it is. It is disappointed because of the numbers. Yes. But we play so good, so we're kind of happy about Super it. Super happy. We're developing oh. so much, and the, the kids are enjoying it and, and, and mm-hmm. loving life. So then we versed back-to-back Ellie football. Um, the result was 5-3, and we won, which is awesome. That's awesome. Um, and really, I, I think we were winning by more at one point, and then they snuck a couple of goals in. Um, but a great result. Um and under 12s uh, in terms of results and points, uh, they're doing the best out of all their teams. Cassio Red's on yeah 18. Kruska's yellow on Kruska's yellow is on 15 points. Okay. We're third. Yeah, we're on nine Twelve. points. Same oh, with yeah, nine, nine, nine. yeah, same with Ellie Football. They're on nine points, but we we beat them. Um, and so yeah, super super exciting, super happy. And then international football and Drago are on uh, at last place. Uh, under 14s though <laughs> look at face <laughs> if, under 14. thank god there's no zoom up under 14s the only reason they dis- that I, I was disappointed this weekend is because they have more to offer they're not showing what they should be showing yeah. they're doing a disservice to themselves they're doing a disservice to themselves it was funny because in the very first round we lost the first game they took a while to understand the game and then like by the end of the game they, on that match they were playing good the second match we won yes and then their attitude in the second round was totally different from the first round yes so That's with the second round I, I was staying positive and things like that and then after the, this third round of uh they made me angry angry car <laughs> um and so they will know i was disappointed in them and hopefully they uh sort themselves out and uh switch on um, so Soccer Life Marcy versus PTA, it was a uh, 2-1 um, to them. We, we lost by one goal, but I just wasn't happy with, they, with the way we played. They just, the brains weren't switched on. Like there was passes where they should, like playing out from the back, they were just scared to play out from the back. There was options on because we expected how they would press and how we should pass out, but then we just didn't do it. And then so we just played to our fullback and a fullback freaked out and passed to the goalkeeper and then there was a goal like that. It was just oh, so man. stupid. So, look, we just, to be fair, we only lost by one goal, but I just wasn't happy with the way we played. And then we had JA7 um, versus us, and we lost 3-1. Um, and that's what really annoyed me, where there was no pressure. They held shape. We really should ate them up. Um, but we just, yeah, talk about it will get me angry again. Um, <laughs> so, boys, switch on under fourteens. Like you, for yourself, like for your own self. Like, there's so much more they should be putting in and, and, and applying themselves in terms of because we know being where they should yeah. be, playing how they should, helping each other out. Um, yeah, the chemistry is just not there. Um, but look, we I went into understanding our squad um, as a side note. Like all our players come through and have played in our development program for a while where I do know um, specifically and, mm. and full on where there's other academies who have just grabbed anyone they could find sort of thing. Um, so that's, I will sp- for me, I don't really care, but it, it kind of ruins the legis- legitimacy of the, of the league mm. a little bit. And yeah. I'm sure we'll speak about that in Zoom calls where there's academies who actually they don't train with the academy whatsoever. They just pick people Um who just, you know, grab who they can find and good mm-hmm. or bad. Um, but yeah, so I know it, it's, it's, I knew going into it that we had a lot of under 13 players and some JSL under 14s. Um, but still, they, sh- they need to apply themselves more. I know they've got more to give. Um, so we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, hopefully we get some points because they need, oh, we're gonna they get need get to sort points. themselves yeah. out. We're going to get some points because they might be frustrated as well because we know them. We know they can be like a way much better because yeah. we know like individual, like how it works. Yes. You now we are doing like a good training session to them. It's just like they need to switch on. Yes. As and actually, the game, they need actually to at the on. development program, so the advanced program is kind of the Premier League stuff and, and competing. The development program was last night and they were actually on fire. They were like, especially one player, uh, Tom, he was on fire. He was killing it. Um, and cool. you could see that, okay, he thought, okay. Can't I, I to see Tom scoring some goals. Yeah, he's like, hey, look, I, I've got to step up a level. Um, where the under-14s are just going through the motion. They just think, oh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
you know, you know, I can, I've got the skills or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're not playing as a team. They're trying to just dribble too much. They're not passing and moving and supporting where they should be. They're watching the ball rather than getting into their position. It's disastrous. Um, and there's no excuse for it because they're 14 years old. There's under 10s who are doing that yeah. same shape and understanding it better than they are. So it's more laziness, which is what upsets me, um, or just arrogance or like not even caring. So that's what disappoints people with the under 14s. Um, but it is what it is. And, uh, That's all right. We'll we're going we're gonna to make it happen. Don't worry. Yeah. Let's check the leaderboard. Just uh, hopefully the under 14s are listening just so you can be embarrassed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but. Oh, we're ninth place. We're not last, at least. Um, so Adelaide Elite 18, Rept Academies 12, J7 12, Drago 10, Superior 10, PDA 10, Kuruska 9. So it's actually a very even uh, competition. Drago 4. We haven't versed them. Football Star Academy zero. We haven't versed them. Which means we have some chance to get some points. Under under fourteen. Just think about it. We have two more games next week. All you need to do is win the two games. (laughs) Yeah. Because think about okay. Can can you just put there like for example, if you if you win like the two next games. Yeah. If we beat Drago, beat Football Star, who are close to us, then cool. That. So yeah, all they need to do is win. Yes, and so the under fourteens the. Oh, hang on, let's mention that. Let's mention the technical difficulty. We had a bit of technical difficulty, anyways. Did move. we? No, no, not at all. Anyways, uh, so yeah, cool. Under 14, switch on. Uh, <laughs> there's some other teams. We versed a lot of the harder teams. We haven't versed Football Star and Drago's B team, I presume. Um, so we've got some chances to showcase what we're made of. Um, but really, the boys got to switch on. But under yeah. 10s, awesome stuff. On an upper trend, really going well. Learning the way we want to play, and uh, hopefully we can bring that positivity into next week. Because it's different when you have like under ten for some. They're kind of like playing a better football. Mm-hmm. It's just like the results not coming. Yes. And then under fourteen needs to switch on yes. because like, we know they can do yes. way much better than under tens. Is just just a matter of like numbers. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's like in penalties. They're playing. Yeah, <laughs> playing. They're playing well. They're just the. They lose a bit of positivity and then we go down from there. Under 12s, positive. They're killing it. They're doing very well. Got nothing really to mention. We just got to keep it up. Um, keep playing the way we're playing. We're, we're improved tenfold from, from from the first week. But yes, let's uh, cool. We'll see what happens next week. Make sure this Saturday we'll hopefully have a video up. It won't be as good because Big Mama Bear she no, come on, she course. recorded it rather than She's Inacio. Awesome. Um, so hopefully there's some good stuff there. But anyways. Remember, Monday Motivation, Tuesday Tips and Tricks, Wednesday Whiteboard, Thursday Podcast, Friday Fun Day, Saturday YouTube Sunday, whatever. Let's go. Cool. Thank you. See See you guys. Bye.